My name is Andrew Brown and I'm conducting a series of interviews with distinguished Scottish women artists. It's called Scottish Women Can Paint and it came as a riposte to the statement made by the German artist George Baselitz who said women can't paint when asked why women were so underrepresented in museums and important exhibitions. These interviews with prominent Scottish women artists sets out to disprove that belief and to understand how against incredible odds a group of dedicated women painters have managed to create some of the best paintings produced inside Scotland and outside in the latter half of the 20th century. Today it's a privilege to be talking to Carol Gibbons who when described by the Scottish painter John Bellany as Scotland's greatest woman artist, replied, leave out the woman bit. Carol, we've known each other since the late 70s, but there are still important facts about your life uh, and work which I don't know. And that, so this conversation will be an important record of your life and work. So simple questions to begin with. Where and when were you born? I was born um, uh, alongside south side of Glasgow on the battlefield of Mary Queen of Scots. She stood at the top of the hill while the battle went of on Langside. below and of course she lost it yeah. and she had, wrote, had to ride all the way from Langside to to, to, was it Lindisco? Or yes. Uh, uh, Lindisco. And then you say, uh, I know it well because for my few years in Glasgow, I lived in Netherlee, Clarkson, just near oh, Langs. You? Yes. Oh. <laughs> you were born in 1935. That's right. July 25th. Uh, what, was there any interest in art in your family? My mother, I found some sketches my mother did of Napoleon. Don't ask me, a small sketchbook. Yeah. But she had no... She went to a school for ladies in, in Ayr. She were, my mother was born in Ayr, in the town of Ayr. I saw a drawing recently of your mother by Alistair Gray. Oh yes, I've got a photograph of that somewhere. Do you remember that at all, being done? Of my mother? Yes. What do you mean? I'm sorry, I don't get you, Jeff. Oh, there was a drawing off your mother by Alistair Gray, so your mother must have known Alistair as oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alistair was... Uh, my group was Alan Fletcher and Douglas Abercrombie, Crombie. my uh, peers. Yes. Both went to London in the 60s. Yes, you know, and you stayed behind, which is one well, of the other... Um, because I had responsibilities with my mother, she wasn't well. Ah. And um, mental problems yeah. because of... The way women are held back, you know. Well, these society, are things you know, I want to talk know, about yeah. very much. And so, uh, she was, she was very bright, and she practically ran this firm mm, called Bright and Light. Mm, and none of the men could do anything. Mm, My mother mm, had the whole responsibility, yeah. and she got half, half the pay of the men. Yeah. Did she encourage you to go to art school? Uh, well, I, I got to it through Mr. McGregor, who was my art teacher. He looked a bit like Van Gogh, actually, <laughs> at Shawlands Academy. <laughs> and um, he did encouraged red hair you. and everything. Yeah. And he encouraged me. He yeah. realised that I was a colourist. Yeah. And he encouraged me. And Mr. Allison, was, who was the head art teacher, was very keen on drawing. So yeah. I had the yeah. two aspects of art there. Yeah. So. While you were still at school, you went on the uh, the educational, art educational stay at right, Castle yeah. Tower. Castle Tower, yes. So that was where you... So that's where I met Sinclair Thompson and Florence Shimmons and then I realised she was very sort of Parisian looking, you know, the striped yeah. jumper and yeah. feminist looking. And, uh -huh. and they encouraged you to go to art college. Very beautiful and... And Sinclair, and they took an interest in me, yeah. and they encouraged me to go to. Well, they pointed me in the direction of the art school, yeah. you know, because I hadn't a clue yeah. <laughs> where, where, where yeah. or about Macintosh or anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, those days, I mean, nobody was saying anything yeah. much, you know. 
about Macintosh. You yeah. know, it was only later on the yeah. bandwagon took off. Yeah. Well, you know, he was but, because Alan Fletcher started a campaign to to save Macintoshes, and he wrote well, to Pevsner, You know, Nicholas Pevsner. Really, but when you got to art school. Did you immediately become friendly with that group, with Alan Fletcher, Alistair Gray? Was uh, that immediate? Well, it was a long story, but yeah. uh, eventually, um, yes, um, they used to come and look at my paintings, the older student, yeah. when I, where, I was, where I was working, and they were in shape, thought my work was pretty good. Yeah. You we know, Alan Fletcher and Douglas Abercrombie. Mm -hmm. But anyway, look, let's go back to it, yeah. Yeah. let's go back to the art college in a way. Um, what what was your experience of art school? How did you oh, enjoy it? Oh, I loved every minute. Absolutely every minute. So it was apart from some ditches in my personal life. Do you think? Do you think as a woman artist? A woman student, you were treated any differently from the male mm, students? You see, the thing is, I got such tremendous support mm. from two male artists. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they. That I didn't. I didn't experience that anything. Thing, yeah. Any. W was that Alan Fletcher and and Douglas Abercrombie? Douglas Abercrombie. He just died, by the way. I do know Did that. Can um, you tell you? Yes, he told me. So you were supported at art college. So I was. I was. I was well guarded. I was. Yeah. You know, I just yeah. changed to my board. <laughs> no, that's a joke. Um, I was going, there's a quote, Marina Abramovich said, you cannot become an artist, either you're born an artist or not. Oh, Do you agree with that? Difficult one, isn't it? Yes. Very difficult. Could you imagine yourself doing anything else apart no, from I painting? No, I think I was born an artist. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Um, what about female tutors? Were there any female tutors? Oh, it was Mary Armour. Oh, she and was she there. Looked, I just ignored the tutors and got on with what I yeah. thought. Yeah. <laughs> how this painting should be done. Nobody ever touched a canvas of mine. Or yeah. Did they give you any no, advice? Yeah, yeah, they just let me help out. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they left a Mary Armour. Yeah. When you well, was, was a good painter, by the way. Yes, no, I think but, so. But um, we all thought they were a bit square, you know. Yeah. Although we didn't have that terminology then. Yeah. <laughs> when you but, when you finished art college, what did you do straight away? Oh, uh, well, I always remember we were rather arrogant. I think I didn't go to collect my diploma. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know how I've got it. Somebody yeah. must have got it yeah. for me. Anyway, we were, we were a bit rebellious, Alan Fletcher. And uh, uh, did you get a studio with him straight away? No, no. What I did, I just did a sort of apprenticeship of watching Alan Fletcher paint. Because yeah. there was not much room in the... It was just, um, it was a tenement, you know, mm -hmm. in 104 games, with game seat. Okay. I, I spent a lot of time reading Roger Fry and Clyde Bell, mm -hmm. you know, because nobody was teaching us yeah. at the art yeah. school. But, and I spent a lot of, an awful lot of life drawing, which mm -hmm. I now regret, mm -hmm. sitting in that lovely mm -hmm. library of Macintoshes, mm -hmm. you know. Yes, of course. Reading Wilensky yeah. on modern art. Yeah. How I was educating myself on modern art, you know. You know, mm -hmm. he was a great Cezannist. Yes, but, mm -hmm. that, but you were and never taught... I made taught a deep impression on him, Wilensky. You were never taught any of that at art school? No, mm -hmm. no. And I remember I was painting a, a standing nude, you know, it was just a small painting, mm -hmm. a nude in Donaldson, who was head of painting, oh, right. came up and said, why don't you do that? And I said to him, because it's too easy. I don't remember saying that. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> and the other thing is how long... But the thing is, Donaldson was, because I worked in a shipyard and gone, yeah. somehow, somehow yeah, got the yeah, job instead yeah. of yeah. painting. Yeah. But oh, there was Squires, Jeff Squires. Oh, I remember him, him too. Yeah. So he was, he used to get me to set up sort of fancy still lives and all that, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, well, a model and... Mm -hmm. Decorate the model and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. I did that. 
Can, can I ask you, you just mentioned still lives at art school. Oh, yeah. Now, you've, all your career, you've painted still lives. Yeah, because uh, Suzanne said, paint an apple, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but that always stuck in my mind. But, but, but what is but, uh, no, I, no, I, I, my early work was mythological. After I left the art school, I got a studio. Mm -hmm. After Alan Fletcher yeah. died, he was mm -hmm. killed in an accident and he's buried in my yeah. lands, you know. Yes, I know. How long were you together, actually, you and Alan? Well, well all through art school and then um, four years after. Because mm. he, he got... Everyone thought I would get a... Diploma, a uh, post-diploma. A, a, a postgraduate, yes. A post, yeah. But I didn't get it for some reason, but Alan and Douglas won. Alan got a sculpture prize. Yeah. And you know, he failed two years I didn't on know account that. of not turning up in time. Yeah. So he, he was mm -hmm. much yeah. older, six years older yeah. than me. But we'll go back to, then let's go back to you, which All is right. what we're here to talk about. Yeah. What was your first exhibition after art college and oh, oh was Alan Fletcher and Douglas Abercrombie in Blasher Square in Glasgow number one I think it was number one yeah. it was an accountant's yeah. middle so, mass was his yeah. name he was a counsellor so and we, he let us have a room so yeah. we had a oh yes and that's it I it was decided that I would have to go and earn some money to pay for the because nobody had any money mm. we hadn't Alan's Fletcher, Alan's, Alan's father used to give him a pound a week. He was a boiler man, at, um, although he was yeah. a qualified engineer. But in his older yeah. age, he got a job as boiler man yeah. in the Grand Hotel, mm -hmm. which is now knocked down for the yeah. road. That they, and that's the bit that appears in Lanark. Yeah. So, so, sorry. No, no, I'm, I'm oh, intrigued yeah, by yeah, all yeah. this. So that was the first exhibition. Yeah. Alan designed the... I watched it, the invitations mm. and printed them and set, got them mm -hmm. printed. Mm -hmm. He was good at that sort of thing. Um, yeah. was that, anyway, we had that to was, pay for it somehow. Was uh, that 1965? I, I'm trying to think. I had to go down, get a bus early in the morning. Alan, we stayed mm. up all night yeah. and he, I went to bed and he got me up and we got a bus down to the bus uh. station. And I got a bus to Anne Bank, mining village in a mining village in in Ayrshire. But and I taught I taught for three months what, in, in school? two schools ah. in St John's and another a little mm -hmm. primary so, little dining. So the men know. didn't teach, but you went and taught. No, and I, I went. I, I, for some reason, it was decided that it would be easier for me to get it, get the job mm -hmm. or something. And I remember my hair was down to here and I had to put it up before I went into the classroom to look severe, you know. Um, also and I lost it. I, I, in the end, I couldn't handle it. Yeah. I remember my first time in the school, I missed her. Somebody said, if they give you any trouble, Miss Gibbons, just send them to me and he had this huge belt. And I thought, no way, I'm not sending kids. <laughs> Because I, we used to see that in the Highlands, you yeah. know. Well, Strapped. I still had that. Do you remember the time? Yes, of course. <laughs> but can I, can I ask you then, you, there was also the connection with you in Airdley. When did that come oh, about? Oh, I met you in Airdley. In the street ones. Of course, we all saw her about. Yeah. We used to see her with her white trousers and um, corduroys mm. and mm. black jacket. Mm -hmm. So did and, and I, of course, Angus Neal figures very largely in my life. Well, that's I was going to talk yeah, to you about Angus Neal yeah. later, but the Airdly it was connection. was a genius, Scottish, a Scottish yeah, genius. Yeah. Did you absolutely no doubt about it? Yeah. Did you ever? Did you ever go to Catalina? No, I never got. I right. never got the chance again. I missed it. I don't know why. Other more mm. sort of respectable types like Morrison and that got to Catalina. Mm -hmm. But I, I missed that chance. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I, 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 mm -hmm. But I did go stay there once with Lil Nielsen later on. 
I when knew, I went up to a show, you know, yeah. the Angus Neil. I knew you knew Nick, Nick Lill, and I want to talk yeah, about yeah. that as well. But what about Airdley? Did you go to her studio in yeah, Glasgow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw her studio after. Well, Angus came down, mm -hmm. uh, and I had the studio in Renfrew Street. Mm -hmm. And the door, it was a big metal door, but I never locked it. And um, I'd made it into one mm -hmm. room, mm -hmm. two rooms. I took a wall down. Mm -hmm. Uh, a partition mm. and made it into one long room mm. with four windows mm. right on Renfrew mm. Street down yeah. from the art school and it, one day I went along and went in and there's this figure I recognised as Angus Neal mm. with the army greatcoat mm. with a kit bag mm. sitting in my studio it was after Joan had died right. and he lost his cottage Yes, I know Morrison they, had it knocked down mm. and I, Angus um, was sitting in my studio and, you and Joan, Joan had told him I was a good painter and, um, yeah. and I was walking up the hill and I just bumped into Joan yeah. and she's so sweet and nice and yeah. did she I, I don't know how she knew who I was yeah. but um but the Angus I, I knew her and, and um we exchanged a few words and she asked me to go up, come to a studio, but I said I was, I was too busy. Mm. <laughs> I was, I, 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 you know, something like I, mm. I, have my, I knew I had my path to go yeah. and it was a different direction. Yeah. And I was, I didn't want to be overwhelmed by, because she was a very strong personality, you know. No, I understand I that. that. That is fascinating because but, uh, but Angus Neal, she, looked, she I mean, looked after Angus Neal, didn't she? Oh yes, God yes. So basically, it, she protected yeah. Angus. Yeah. Yes. So if I hadn't been for Joan, I had to think what it happened because he was shell shocked from the war. Yeah. You know, he was only eighteen, and his mother mm -hmm. sent him over to France. Yeah. Can you believe yeah. this? I don't get that. No, I'm understand. saying that after Joan died, that oh, yes. Angus latched on to you That's as right. someone he, to look at. Yes. Uh, well, what else could he do? He'd lost everything up there. Yeah. He threw his stuff over the cliff. Yeah, I, I mean, he lost. Yeah. His cottage was knocked down. Yeah. I heard it was um, terrible that from Lil Nielsen told me yeah. after Joan's death, yeah. everything was locked yeah, up. Yeah. She wasn't allowed yeah, in and he wasn't allowed in. Yes. Uh, that's a tragedy. It was a tragedy. Well, okay, but let's get back to you again. Yeah. First of all, when you started exhibiting, how did the, the public and the press react to your work? Oh, nothing but... I had it easy. Mm. I mean, uh, Cordelia Oliver mm -hmm. was the guardian, mm -hmm. or the writer for the Scotsman, mm -hmm. I think, or the Herald. Mm -hmm. I, 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 oh, uh, Could you every, everyone, was it I got terrific reviews. I've read some of them. I, I never had any. Exactly. Yeah, you know, I was recognised by my peers and that. And even the Duke of Edinburgh bought one of your paintings, <laughs> which is <laughs> the funniest thing. It <laughs> wasn't exactly a modern just. Well, actually, I was in print <laughs> talking against the monarchy with a photograph of me yeah. in the Herald. The mm. kids at school knew it. Mm. Down in Anne Bank. Yeah. That's completely weird, isn't it? After your short period of teaching, after the short time you were teaching. Yes, I couldn't stand anymore. Yeah. I realised yeah. that there was no way I could teach in a yeah. school. I couldn't ah. handle it. Yeah. The kids were just running around. Actually, do you know that when I got into the school, there were tiny little bits of paper they had to draw on with a pencil. Mm. And I brought in big bits of sugar big yeah. and brushes and paint. Yeah. So once you stopped teaching, how did you survive? How did you manage oh, to survive? That's the question. Uh, well, I was lucky in that if I, if I got to manage to get to a party, mm -hmm. I was bound to meet someone who was interested in, who might be interested in painting, and I might sell, get mm -hmm. them up to my mm -hmm. studio mm -hmm. and sell something. But that was very rare. I did get a, an Arts Council award. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you that. No, I, I didn't get very much. Mm. Oh no, they came here to me, to this studio. Mm -hmm. 
the Arts Council sent someone. Oh, Douglas Abercrombie came up at the same time. It was just luck. I mean, Douglas came in to the studio and done a, I'd done a lot of good paintings. Mm. I mean, one, my best one up in Inverness, have you seen it? Interior of my studio. Uh, have you ever seen that one? I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, that's my masterpiece of that period. Yeah. And um, yeah, well, it's up in Inverness Museum. Yeah. Because the Arts Council dismantled mm. the collection mm -hmm. and. So they gave it, it to the Inverness Museum. Inverness asked for the painting. Yeah. No, people asked for the paintings. Mm -hmm. So Inverness asked for this mm -hmm. painting of mine. Mm -hmm. They've got one of my best, very best mm -hmm. paintings. I mean, can we yeah. can we talk about just about the, your process of painting? Because it, it's Sorry, uh, do, can we talk about how you paint? Because that is really important. Caroline McNairn said, "The hill, the stream, the tree." That's all that her landscapes were about. What is your, what are the icons that you paint? Oh, well, you see, there were so many influences going on in my head, like Picasso and Goya and Bright and... Yeah, uh, but, but, um, but you managed to synthesise those influences. You managed to make them yeah, you. Yeah, I, 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 I did. It was a struggle. Of course. I mean, still, let's go back again to still life. I love oh. your still lifes, and that's the thing that you best. But I think sometimes your big still lifes are almost landscapes. You paint yeah, them. Yeah, the, the one I'm working on just now is. Yes, which we made still life can, into landscape, yeah. We can, is that what it's so called? That ah. must come from the, maybe the Highlands or something, you know, in my psyche. Well, that's the. Being up in the. Thing that we talked, talked well, about. Well, we weren't exactly up in Brain Cole or anything like that, but we were sort of. I, I was like a very privileged child here because my mother herself didn't, I wasn't evacuated but other kids were thing on my neck. My mother herself took us up in person mm -hmm. to this, um, I remember going up the Waverley, up the Cleaning Canal and yeah. everything. Where was it exactly? That and it was um, a place called Cagnes. Uh, Ardfern. Ardfern. I know Ardfern well. So Fern. you're at Ardfern. Ardfern. We've never Fern. talked about this before. Ardfern. Craignish Castle's on the and, coast and in Ardfern. And we used to walk a mile to school. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we, so we, we moved to another farm when the McGilps went, sort of went into hardship mm -hmm. and they had to cut down and things. And we were up in a place called Ardlanis. Do you know mm. that? I don't know that. I, it just don't know that. And we walked all the way to school. Because mm. we ran about in our bare feet. It was yeah. terrific. And there was a big family called the Wipers. who had mm. lots of... Mm. There's quite a lot of kids up there. Yeah. We just ran around wild. But can I, can I ask you, do you think the memory of that landscape then... Yes, it must has have seeped into the psyche, you know, as it does. Yeah. You know, uh, and the still life <laughs> tradition that you're doing, do you think that's because of Brack and people like that? Or is that College of Art tradition still life? No, it's not the College of Art. <laughs> I phoned up Douglas, she was in London, you know, where mm -hmm. art was in the air, you mm -hmm. know. That's why he went down there, mm -hmm. you know, Douglas and that. Uh, and uh, he yeah, art was in the air. What, what, what was that? What, what, what was that he said? He encouraged you to do still life. Oh yes. So Douglas suggested, and that was the first one. This painting here. Really, behind you. That Fantastic. was the first one after the mythological painting. Yes. I so, I phoned him up and said yeah. I've exhausted myself. Yeah. I can't go any further with this painting of mythology. Yeah. Maggie Hambling said. Oh right. If she had a painting crying in one room and a baby crying oh. in the other, she would go to the baby. I'm not sure if that's true. Oh, what that, would you well, go I would to? Do, go for the baby every time. Um, what else would you do? Yeah, of course. And do you think it made a difference having a child to your painting? Pardon? Did it make a difference? Did your your domestic oh, yeah, circumstance? Yeah, 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 sorry. You see, the, you, you can say that right. It's a very good model. <laughs> <laughs> but let me lead on a bit. I think from then onwards, for me, your paintings from the 70s are your best for me. So despite having a, a baby and being 
Oh, uh, yeah. You still managed to, yeah, to yeah, paint yeah, and was, actually yes, develop. Uh, nothing would stop me painting. No, sorry, darling, but uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> no, I, uh, of course I love my son very much. Mm. I don't know what I'd, yeah. I've done without his support. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coming I up think, from London yeah. all the way to... Today, me, today. I think maybe afterwards we can have a, a small conversation with Henry, if Henry oh, would be willing you. to do that about some things too. But listen, let's go back to other things about you. Right. That's what I, do, I know you went to Spain at one time, but was that because you thought you needed to get out of Scotland? Did oh, you ever feel... Oh, God, I was desperate to get out. I was yeah. desperate to go somewhere, you know. Do you feel you receive the recognition that you deserve for your work? No, well I did in a way because... You had early sales and in the Gallery of Modern Art. Yeah, but that... Well, hang on, Alistair Gray donated that painting. Oh really? Uh, they didn't buy it. Mm, that's interesting, They I didn't, didn't buy it, that. Alistair Gray donated it. Yeah. But Douglas Hall, who was the curator, yeah. came up to my studio way back you know, mm. in the 60s. Mm. In 62, came up to my studio and down the, the road hill from the art school, yeah. 104. Mm. But he didn't buy anything then? Yes, he did. Ah. He bought, they bought, us, he bought, us, bought something for himself mm. and he bought a small glass about that size for the Good. museum. Yeah. But the people who were in charge of Calvarossi or somebody like that, yeah. they they thought I was a bit of a joke. I found out because I found them laughing. I went through, they never invited me to the big openings. Mm -hmm. And there was a Geo Committee, and of course Alan Fletcher was influenced by Geo Committee. Mm -hmm. And they, I, know, I, I didn't get any invites to these mm -hmm. openings. So these openings were going on. Yeah. And that was my way of meeting people mm -hmm. and talking about art, mm -hmm. about possible yeah. Well, I mean, I so I was kept out in that yeah. way. I remember that we used to meet in the early eighties. And I discovered you in the high street at yeah. Andrew and walked in, and I loved the gallery yeah. and C six nine gallery. Yeah. That was seventies. Oh, that was actually. lovely. And, then and we I thought I'll, I'll okay. chime in. <laughs> he took me on right away and no. gave me this lovely show, and it was the most beautiful gallery. Was Stone walls and yeah. maybe Queen of Scots. Had me, yes, there. it was uh, oh, it, it opposite was, uh, the that cathedral. Was a lovely show, Andrew. And those paintings look marvelous. And you really in there. helped me. Yeah, no, I, it was a pleasure. I owe you that, Andrew. Well, yeah, I that think that was absolutely I, wonderful. I believe that you certainly not only the greatest Scottish woman painter. I, 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 I think I, of your generation, you probably are the greatest Scottish painter. Uh, but no, so no. then, how would you define success? for yourself. A good brush stroke. <laughs> That's what I was hoping you might say. It's not someone it's not someone telling you it's good, it's no, you knowing no. it's good. Are you ever satisfied completely with a painting? Pardon? Are you ever completely satisfied with a painting? Yes. Sometimes you just do it and you fill it off. You know, I yeah. remember I painted a, a big grey painting that went missing from yes. the Edinburgh. I love uh, that Angus, painting. Angus Neil was with me and he'd gone out for a walk. Yeah. He was walking and I came back and I'd finished this painting and it was all in greys. Mm. It was just an inspiration and I, I did it. A big square painting mm. and it was stolen from the RSC in Edinburgh. Yeah. No, Can stolen you believe from it? The, well, we, it, the it disappeared. And and I, I'd left it a bit late to go through to collect yeah. it, you know. Yeah. Like well, you do. It'll and turn it'll, up one day, I hope. It'll, yeah, yeah all, 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 if Henry said go to the police about things, but mm. I think I'd rather the painting was, <laughs> they might burn it, they might panic and burn it. Yeah. What then? You'd better yeah. just to let people have the yeah. painting. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, do you, when you do a painting, do you do a sketch for it first, or do you just go straight onto the canvas? It's different every time. It's not always the same. Mm. I remember once I drew that big painting, you know, the, with the Van Gogh, the book mm. of Van Gogh open on the table, mm. homage to Van Gogh. Mm. It's Mrs. Fletcher's table. I don't oh, know I know that one. Yes, I know that painting. I still, it was there, still life. Mm -hmm. 
with flowers and uh, mm. and a jug and um, mm. the book of Van Gogh yeah. open it, mm -hmm. the portrait of Van Gogh. Mm. So no sketch for that before. And I, I started out. I drew it in. I drew it first in pastel. How necessary is discipline? And what, how necessary is discipline and what quality do you think is most important to be a good artist? To be a good painter? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Stamina. <laughs> <laughs> if no one was going to look at the, your work, would you still paint? Oh. Oh, You've done it, haven't you, when no, no one's I looked think, at it? I think one always has a... An audience in mind, mind yeah. 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 yeah, you want your peers to see your work. Yeah. Peers, peers are more important for yeah, you. That's peers, important. Your peers were peers, more important than the public. Peers are the most important thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, if being a woman, having lived a woman's life, living in a woman's body... I can't think you have lived a woman's life. Yeah. I, did you believe as a particular female artistic sensibility? as different from a male one? Uh, that's difficult. I, I can't answer that. Mm -hmm. Or do you think it's just a matter of personal experience, ability, temperament. opportunity? Temperament. Temperament. Mm -hmm. Do you think women have different temperament to men? Oh. <laughs> oh, I, I know it's a difficult question. I know yeah. it's difficult. Mm -hmm. I can't answer that. I, I think I suppose the answer is a question I, that one needs I to... I suppose that's what you're getting at, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I really cannot mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. And finally, if you had to give a bit of an advice to a young female art oh. student today, what would you say to her? Keep at it. <laughs> hmm. I, uh, just be true to yourself. Which you have always been completely <laughs> honest all your life. Listen, thank you. It's been lovely to speak to you. It's nice to see you again. Pleasure, Andrew. Okay, thank you.